Um, but now it's a pleasure to introduce Dr. Montana from the History Department, who will be um, speaking on the Rwanda genocide. So thank you for being with us. Well, thank you, everybody, and thank you for inviting me back to uh, speak with uh, the History Club. Uh, last semester, I shared uh, the podium here with uh, Dr. Foyer, and we kind of talked about history and propaganda. That is why I mean to structure uh, what I'm going to say today about the Rwandan uh, genocide. So instead of kind of, you know, providing a formal-like lecture, I would like to make it something more informal, a conversational-like, so that we can you know, discuss some of the, the, the issues surrounding the Rwandan genocide. And the premise of this informal-like conversation will revolve around the following question, how do we make sense of the Rwandan genocide. And before I kind of you know, move on, uh, I would like to throw a question to you, the audience, and ask you what you know about the Rwandan genocide. Good. We have one expert here who happens to um, follow me everywhere I go. I, let's see, if I remember correctly, colonial influence created uh, two different label groups within the Rwandan area as far mm -hmm. as tribes go. And then this influence carried over into this period, or I should say built a period of uh, a little character. I wouldn't intertribal conflict, but it, it created a, a problem that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you want to go off that characterization, but essentially it created a problem that wouldn't have existed without the clone war. Very good, and knowing where you're coming from, so the points are very much well taken. Uh, who else want to say something about the one you genocide? What you know about? It? Yes. Um, the the Hutu and the Tutsis, um, the political strife, and uh, we're going back. We're uh, going back and forth fighting for political power in uh, Rwanda, and um, I believe the Hutus. Uh, committed an act of, or committed the genocide against the Tutsis. Mm -hmm. um, it lasted about 100 days or so. Mm -hmm. Yes, Wayne? And the only way you could tell the two tribes apart was everyone had uh, like a passport or document mm -hmm. that indicated which tribe they were in. There was nothing physical about either tribe that I recall that, I mean, that's how you, and as soon as one tribe identified the other tribe through that passport thing, then the animosity would be created if, if like I said, it, it wasn't um, that there was a difference in color or height or any physical characteristics. Mm -hmm. It was purely that label in that passport that started years before. Mm -hmm. That's good. I think these are very good, important points, uh, ranging from <coughs> the ethnic groups that were at the center of the Rwandan genocide, the Hutus, who were the vast majority, numbering almost up to 80% of Rwandan population, and Tutsis, who were the minority group. And then the other question had to do with some of the colonial contexts, whether they existed or they didn't exist, or whether the problem exists, to what extent, and then to what extent did the coming of uh, colonialism kind of created uh, this issue. And one of the ways in which colonialism created this has been alluded to um, by uh, Wayne, uh, especially with regard to the question of this identification that were created in order to separate them in these groups. Well, I'd like to say that you, this audience, for me, I think you are one of the most enlightened audience that you know I come across when I ask questions like this. What do you know about the Rwandan genocide? Perhaps we are students of history. Perhaps we 
because we are intellectuals. We read, we analyze, we follow what is going on. The same question, if it is posed on the street, I would say very few people will respond in the way that you people respond. And we are all here as shapers and makers of history in order to go out, change society, and prevent events such as this from happening again. So I would like to begin by showing a clip about nine and a half minutes from the famous movie, What's All Wonder. Uh, the beginning of this clip would kind of highlight some of the historical problems that we need to understand in order to be able to move forward. If we want to classify this issue as a genocide or post-colonial you know, conflict in the African setting. So we're gonna take a few minutes, view this documentary, and then we'll move on. Money. Hmm. 
It's time for you to join your people. Thank you, George. But time is also money. And if six extra cases appear today, along with the regular order. His niece is good at the hotel. Which is very good. I'm always glad to see you both. Uh, 